Hello everyone, welcome back to my YouTube channel. In this particular video, we'll be looking into a very interesting algorithm which is developed by Google and this algorithm is used to rank the web pages on the internet. The name of the algorithm is page rank algorithm. So let's have an overview of this particular algorithm. Now as said, this algorithm is found by Google developers. The algorithm is basically used to rank the web pages that are present over the internet. Ranking means relevance or importance. So basically the relevant and the most important pages for a particular query that is fired by any of the user can be easily retrieved with the help of this particular algorithm. This algorithm takes into account the links that are present between different nodes in the entire network as votes for the authorities. Now based on the links between these nodes, it determines the page score. Now this page score is nothing but the, the rank of every single web page. Now if a particular page has a higher web page score, it means that that particular page is of more relevance to the query that is fired by the user. And out of all the page score values of every single node that we have got in the final result by applying this particular page rank algorithm, whichever is the maximum will be called as the most relevant page. Now note one thing that in this particular algorithm, the scores that are associated with every single node will be updated periodically just to increase the accuracy as and when new web pages are fed into the network. So I hope you must have got an idea of what page rank algorithm is. Now we'll be looking into the actual steps that we need to follow for performing this particular algorithm. So let's consider that we have a website which contains n different web pages. The total number of web pages will be stored in the variable n. Now the first thing that we need to do is to set a vector r0. This is the initial vector which is called as R0 vector. The vector R0 will be a matrix of the order n cross 1, where n is the total number of nodes or web pages. Now this vector will store the page scores of every single node that are present inside the network. Now initially we are not aware about which web page is of higher relevance. So therefore at the initial stage we'll assign the value as 1 by n to all the nodes that are present inside the R0 vector. Let's say if the network has three nodes, that means the vector R0 will contain the value 1 by 3 for every single node. So I hope this particular vector R0 initialization is clear to you all. Now the next step is to compute the transition matrix M. The transition matrix M will be of the order n cross n where n is the total number of nodes present inside the network. Now what this transition matrix will contain? It will contain the probability of making a transition from every single node to all the other nodes that are present inside the network. That means it will store what is the probability of moving from one particular node to other node. We will be seeing an example in which I will tell you how to create the transition matrix from a given graph. Now once we compute the transition matrix, we now need to continuously find the next vectors. Now if you remember that initially we have constructed the initial vector that is R0 vector. Now using that R0 vector we need to find out the next vector which will be R1. So the formula for finding the R1 vector is the multiplication of the matrix M with the initial vector R0. Similarly, if we want to find out the next vector that is R2 vector, we have to multiply the transition matrix M with the R1 vector. So hence in general, we can say that the formula for finding the next vector Ri plus 1 will be equal to the multiplication of the matrix M with the current vector which is R of i. We need to continuously find out the next vector as per the number of iterations that is specified in the problem. Now once the number of iterations are accomplished, then we'll get the final vector R. And this final vector R will be containing the final page ranks of every single web page. The web page which is having the highest page rank will be of higher relevance. 
and this is how we calculate the most relevant web pages using the page rank algorithm so i hope the algorithm is clear now using this particular algorithm now we are going to solve a very interesting example and here is the example so the example says that we need to compute the page rank of every single page in the following graph we have to perform three iterations for finding the page ranks and here is the graph you can see that the graph contains three distinct nodes and here the nodes are connected with connections since here we have three nodes hence our variable n will contain the value 3 now if you remember the algorithm the first step was to create the transition matrix from this particular graph now as i said the transition matrix will be of the order n cross n since we have three nodes over here so the transition matrix will be of the order 3 cross 3 the nodes are a b and c so now we have to find out the probability of transitioning from one node to the other node so let's start with the first node so always remember you need to start from the top to the left so here we'll start from the a node and we'll move to the a node so you can see that from a node three arrows are coming out to the node a b and c so the starting node a has three choices to move and out of these three choices, one choice is that A node will go to the A node again. Which means the probability of moving from A to A will be 1 out of the three possibilities, which is 1 by 3. So hence we'll write 1 by 3 in the place where A to A transition is happening. Something like this. So I hope you are getting what I am trying to see. Similarly, now we'll move ahead and now the transition will be from the node B to the node A. So here B is the origin node. Now in the graph you can see that there are two arrows that are coming out from the node B. The arrow is going to node A or to the node C. Out of these two possibilities there is one possibility that node B will move to node A hence the probability will be 1 by 2. The next transition will be from node C to A. So you can see that C has two outgoing arrows. One to the node C itself and second to the node B. There is no outgoing arrows to the node A. Hence, the probability of transitioning from node C to A will be 0. So, I hope it is clear to you all. Now, moving ahead, we are going to now transition from node A to B. Something like this. So, you can see that A has three outgoing arrows. Out of these three outgoing arrows, one arrow is moving from A to B. Hence, the probability of moving from node A to B will be 1 by 3. Now moving ahead, we are going to now transition from node B to B. B has two outgoing arrows, one to node A and one to node C. There is no outgoing arrow from node B to B itself. Hence the probability of moving from node B to B itself is 0. Next we have the transition from C to B. C has two outgoing arrows, one to C itself and one to B. Out of these two, there is one possibility of C to move to B. Hence, the probability of moving from C to B will be 1 by 2. Moving ahead, we are now going to make a transition from A to C. You can see that A has 3 arrows. Out of these 3 arrows, 1 arrow is moving from A to C. Hence, the probability of moving from A to C will be 1 by 3. Similarly, now we will move from B to C. Now, B has 2 outgoing arrows, 1 to A and 1 to C. So, the probability of moving from B to A will be 1 by 2. Similarly, now we will move ahead and we will try to make a transition from C to C. As you can see in the graph, C has two arrows that are outgoing from it, one to C itself and one to B. So you can say that the probability of moving from C to C itself is 1 by 2. Hence we will write 1 by 2 here. So now you can see that we are done with this particular transition matrix and this matrix will be called as M. So the first step is done. Now we'll move on to the next step in which we are going to compute the R0 vector which is the initial vector which states the page rank of all the nodes at the initial stage. Now if you remember the algorithm, in the algorithm it states that at the initial stage we are not aware about the rank or the relevance of any single page. Hence we will fill the initial page ranks of all the nodes as the value 1 by n, n being the number of nodes present inside the network. Here the network contains 3 nodes, hence we will write 
1 by 3 as the page rank value of every single node. So now we are done with the computation of R0 vector as well as the M matrix. Now the next step is to perform the iterations by calculating the next vectors. So the formula for finding the next vector is the multiplication of the matrix M with the current vector that is R of I. So in the iteration 1 we have the matrix M with the initial vector that is R0. Now if we compute the multiplication of these two we will get the R1 vector which is the next vector. The first matrix is of the order 3 cross 3, the second matrix is of the order 3 cross 1, hence the resultant matrix will be of the order 3 cross 1. Here you need to perform simple matrix multiplication. Now after multiplication, the first record will contain the value 5 by 18. Similarly, the second record will contain the value 5 by 18 and then the last record will contain the value 8 by 18. So these are the page ranks of each node in the vector R1. So once we compute this R1 vector, we now need to move to the next iteration. Now in the iteration 2, again we have to perform the same multiplication but in this particular step we have to use R1 vector because we are now supposed to find out the next vector which is R2 vector. So if you multiply these two matrices, we will get the R2 vector. The first record will contain the value 25 by 108. The second will contain the value 34 by 108 and the third record will contain the value 49 by 108. So this is how we computed the R2 vector. Now using this R2 vector, we have to move to the third and the last iteration of this particular example through which we can find out the R3 vector. Now again we have to perform the same thing. In the third iteration, we have to multiply the matrix M that is the transition matrix and the R2 vector. So after multiplying these two matrices, we will get the R3 vector and the R3 vector will contain these records. So after computation, the first record will contain the value as 152 by 648. The second record will contain the value 197 by 648 and the third record will contain the value 299 by 648. So this is the final R3 vector that we were supposed to calculate because it was mentioned that we need to calculate page rank after three iterations and we have done all the three iterations. So this is the final result that we have got after the three iterations and now from this particular R3 vector we have to check which node has the highest page rank. So you can clearly see that the node C has the highest page rank value which is 299 by 648 and hence the node C you can also call it as web page C has the highest page rank value which means that node C is of the highest relevance as well as importance. So according to a particular query that is fired by any of the user on the internet, web page C will, will be displayed at the top of the results page because it is having the highest relevance according to that particular query. And this is how the Google's page rank algorithm works. So I hope it is very much clear to you all. Now if you guys have any single doubt in the algorithm or in the example, then you can straight away put it in the comment section. I'll be happy to solve your doubts. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel because subscription is the most important factor. It motivates me a lot. So please go now and hit the subscribe button and also hit like as well as share it with your friends. And don't forget to hit the bell icon and follow me on Instagram.